Avatar Legends is going to be a first game for a lot of new people to the RPG space. With its simplistic mechanics, easy character creation, and wonderful storytelling opportunities, it's going to be a great game for a lot of new players, but it also means that there are some things lacking for more experienced players or people who are coming from games like D&D, Pathfinder, or even 3.5 games. And the biggest departure from some of those games or even other Powered by the Apocalypse games is that in this game, your stats are basically set. Each playbook has a set number of stats and you get to add one plus one to any of them. Contrasting that to other Powered by the Apocalypse games where you have whole arrays of stats that you can choose from, or D&D or other types of TTRPGs where you get to roll your own stats and make your own characters very individually and very, very precisely. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna go over different ways of stack creation, whether it be a standard array, rolled stats, or a point by system that I've designed. And I hope this is going to help you guys a lot with creating characters that are going to be more customized to you and your storylines. And if you like Avatar Legends videos and you want to see more of these, consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon to get notified and check out some of the other Avatar Legends videos. I have a playlist up here in the cards that has a whole list of them that I've already done, so maybe that might help you guys out. What's up everybody? My name is Chris and today we're going to be going over different stat creation methods. Now the first thing we're going to do is the absolute easiest, the standard array. If you look at every single one of the Avatar Legends stat sheets, you have a zero, a plus one, a plus one, and a minus one. That's the standard array that we have here. It's very simple, it's very concise, and it's really easy just to remember. And you also get a plus one that you can use to increase any of those stats by one to a maximum of a plus two, unless you have a certain character growth that you choose, which lets you go up to a plus three, but that's very few and far between. The standard array is the absolute easiest, and that's what every playbook has built into it, which I think is fantastic. It works really well for the characters, and it gives you a very good baseline for how you should build each character to give you the most effective stats for the builds that they kind of have in mind. Because unlike other TTRPGs, Avatar Legends doesn't want you to take a character sheet and then build a character around it. It wants you to take a character concept that you have or make a character, and then find a playbook that fits that character most. And the Standard Array is a fantastic method for new people to get into this game. It's no thought. You don't really have to put much thought into how you want to build your character because it's just there. You don't have to know the stats. You don't have to know the moves. You can just use a character sheet and it just works from there. Now, number two, we're going to be going over the point by system. Now, the point by system is a lot simpler than any type of D&D point by you've ever seen, honestly. Still keeping with the Standard Array layout, you have a plus one, a plus one, a zero, and a minus one. My goal for this was to balance it around the Standard Array, basically making sure that if you wanted to, you could go above some stats, but you're also going to be below in others kind of like how typical D&D point buy does. So how this point buy works is you start with five points and negative ones across the board. Now you can use one of those points to increase one of those minus ones to a zero, so on and so forth, up to a max of two. Now you could do anything from having two minus ones, a plus two and a plus one, or you could just do flat zeros with one one. It is all dependent on what you want to do and it's all dependent on how you want to do the math on that one. Since there's only five points, you don't really have a lot of playroom with it but it also just makes sure that you're gonna stay kind of equal with the standard array. There is also an alternative method that you could do where you start with all your stats at a minus two and you get four extra points that you can spend on. You can also increase the cap to a plus three, the absolute top that you could ever do on anything, honestly. And there's extra math with that one, but you kind of get the picture here. Each point that you add is only going to be one point spent, and you can just play around with that. And since there's only four stats, you can just kind of do whatever you want with that. So that's my way of doing a point buy. It's not my favorite method of doing it, but it is a method that you could use. And next we have rolled stats. This is the most high risk, high reward one that you can do. And a lot of people choose to just go for point buy or a standard array because of how random this one can be. You can have absolute bare minimum stats, or you could have near godlike stats. It all depends on the luck of just rolling your dice. Now the method I've been toying around with is a d6 method. Just since this game uses d6 for everything, I wanted to use a d6 for this as well. Now this method's actually really simple. You roll a d6 and the number on the d6 correlates with the stat that you get. Starting with a 1 correlating with a negative 2, a 2 correlating with a negative 1, a 3 correlating with a 0, a 4 correlating with a plus 1, a 5 correlating with a plus 2, and a 6 correlating with a plus 3. The godlike stat that nothing lets you get to except class features. Now theoretically, yes, if you roll it four times, it's possible you could get four plus threes, or you could just get four minus twos. It is entirely possible to go any way with that, but the average rolls around a 3.5, so it's gonna be a zero or one on average. Now, I only really recommend allowing rolled stats for something like this if these are people who have played the game before who understand what's going on and know kind of how they wanna build their characters. Because since you can allocate your stats in this way and it's kind of random, you kind of have to know a bit about the game and a bit how you wanna build your character to do something like that. There's something else I had. I can't, I just lost exactly what I had to say after that. Jesus Christ. And one thing to keep in mind with rolled stats is it's very possible that you're gonna have characters on super contrasting ends of a power scale. You could have a character that has super high stats and a character that has super low stats and there's just gonna be an inevitable power. With Avatar Legends, it's not as noticeable and it's not as power hungry as something like Pathfinder or D&D where every stat does matter and having bigger numbers means you do things better 
In Avatar Legends, the bigger number does help, but overall everybody still has the same ability across the board and has different things they can do to increase their chances. So the bigger numbers do mean something, but it's marginal in this game compared to D&D where it's a very large aspect or Pathfinder where it's an even bigger aspect of the game. And just as a little bonus here, I have an extra alternative way to roll stats in case you wanna keep things within the standard array form. You're using a D4 for this one. I don't like this one as much because not everybody has D4s versus D6s, but that's beside the point. You take a four-sided die and it's, again, it's gonna correlate with the right numbers. One's gonna be a minus one, two's gonna be zero, three is gonna be a plus one, and four is gonna be a plus two. Still, you have a much higher power ceiling here than you would typically get with the standard array, but it's not nearly as bad as a plus three or a minus two. Everybody's gonna be around the same level no matter what here, because again, the average dice roll for this one is going to be about a two two and a half so you know around a zero or a one again and that's really it that is the stat allocation methods that i've figured out over this past week or so that i've played out with my friends that i've kind of done the math around and i think these work really well for allocating stats to various characters however you want to build them now i do think avatar legends may include some rules like this in the main book but they didn't for the quick start so here i am i just did it myself and if you need a little cheat sheet, I have a graphic already made that is available for download on my Patreon absolutely free. If you just go into the description, click the first Patreon link, and it'll lead you right to it. And again, it's absolutely free. No pressure to subscribe or anything like that. You can just download it and use it to your heart's content. Just please don't crop out the, the watermark. That's that's for me to get credit and stuff like that. I, I it, it helps me out, okay? With that in mind, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click that little subscribe button and click that little bell icon down below to get notified of video uploads. If you want to see more Avatar Legends content, let me know in the comments down below what kind of videos you want to see next. And a massive thank you and a massive shout out to my patrons. You guys are fantastic. I love you all. And an even bigger top tier shout out to my top tier patrons. Thank you all so much. Corey H, Amaldine Shepard, Rutana, Elizabeth S, Dark Cerberus, Connor Kendall, Ethan Hunley, and Evan A. Thank you all so much for my top tier patrons. I love you all. You are the reason I'm able to do this. You guys make up most of my patrons and I love you all. Mwah! With that being said, if you guys want some more behind the scenes stuff, if you want to see some free download action that you guys can check out at any given moment and get notified for them, be sure to click that subscribe button to the Patreon and kind of help you out one of your favorite content creators. I mean, if you're watching at this point, I hope I'm a favorite. I hope you at least tolerate me. And with that being said, I love you all and I'll see you in the next video. Later, everyone.